how do you typically, um, you know, engage IT for, you know, new products that you're looking to, to buy? I'm lucky enough to uh, have a strong IT team that understands the vision, that understands the need to change uh, and with that they have in the film. Welcome to the Financial Innovations Podcast, helping CFOs save money and time by investing in cutting edge technology. Really excited today to have Ty Vanderwees on uh, with me. Ty, it's great to have you on. Thank you for having me. So we have a lot of exciting, uh, you know, topics to to talk about. You know, maybe Ty, if you want to uh, give a minute or two and just introduce yourself to the audience, and then we could jump into uh, you know areas that you know can help CFOs, you know, like yourself, save uh, save money and, and sure, absolutely. Uh, again, thanks for having me, uh, Ty van der Wees, uh, born and raised in the Netherlands. Uh, started my career at Deloitte after that for a couple of years I jumped into the business uh, with the aim to create value for a different organization that I was working for uh, started my career in a large listed organization after Deloitte uh, went through a large listed organization uh, that listed on the Stockholm Stock Exchange and spent the bulk of my career within that organization uh, Within that organization, I had the opportunity uh, to take on different uh, projects across the globe. Spent some time in South Africa, uh, spent some time in Sweden, and I've been in the US for about uh, four years now. So, uh, yeah, that's on a high level a bit about me. No, that's great. So, it sounds like you have a lot of uh, experience in, in different places, which uh, which is great for us because I'm sure we can learn uh, you know a lot about um, you know, some universal topics that, you know, that have helped uh, in, in all the places that, that you've been. Um, so I, I guess the first, uh, the first question that, that I had for you is that is, you know, in today's day and age where, you know, there's a bit of technology for this, for that, for different functions of organizations, you know, many of them are struggling with, you know, we have a set budget, we don't know where to allocate those resources um, most efficiently. Yeah, you know, where have you seen, um, you know, kind of the best uses of, of capital from a financial systems uh, standpoint? That's a very good question. I mean, uh, working within a global organization, uh, one of the challenges that we face is that, uh, that we have to deal with different ERP systems, some better than others. Uh, changing ERP systems, like many CFOs know, is not uh, the favorite thing to do. It takes a lot of time. Uh, is disruptive to the business, and there's loads of pitfalls there. But I've experienced throughout my career uh, to uh, overcome that hurdle is to utilize uh, supplementary tools such as uh, Power BI, which is a business intelligence tool, and it delivers or it creates uh, an increased level of flexibility. So we made a comparison, uh, on how can we make our organization more efficient from a software point of view, when it, you can have that opportunity to chase that whole ERP system with this challenging and it uh, creates loads of risks uh, throughout the organization, disruptive to the operations and the likes. While you also have another option, which is uh, supplementary tools such as Power BI, which is a business intelligence tool, which is significantly less disruptive, it's uh, flexible. And it allows you to uh, make the the older EOP systems that are uh, often not as flexible significantly more flexible. The investment there is also significantly lower. Uh, so for me, uh, if you were to make a decision surrounding uh, ERP uh, software, uh, making an organization more flexible, bringing it to the current day and age, uh, would it invest in a new EOP system or uh, apply the subsequent tools such as uh, Power BI and our automation tools to, uh, to cover that need. We're more efficient in terms of uh, cash spent, and uh, if you do that right, uh, the return of that is is huge. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, a tool like like you know what I've found is uh, 
Power BI has been very disruptive in the market just because prior to Microsoft, you know, releasing it, you had a few options in terms of how you get your dashboards and they can be very expensive in terms of hundreds of dollars per user per month. And, you know, Power BI comes in and I think it, you know, starts at 20 bucks a month per user. And, you know, it's a, it's a low investment, uh, you know, great way to, you know, get yourself into creating dashboards and, you know, really being able to report on your data. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. It is, uh, it's very dynamic. And of course, it's on that sub- sub- supplement uh, or uh, substitute the ERP system as a whole, but also which fights specifically in the FPA field. It's important to get uh, insights in an efficient and effective way. This day and age, we live in the data age, and it's important to, uh, yeah, to get uh, as much insights as possible, again, in an efficient and effective way. It is surely what, uh, what Power BI can provide. So uh, it, uh, it might help you to uh, yeah, delay or perhaps uh, completely uh, put it off the books in terms of making a huge new piece system that perhaps works. Yeah, perhaps not the best in terms of flexibility, but again, with a supplement tool such as Power BI, yeah. it can uh, be defense to a very powerful tool. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I know that um, one thing that is a common theme, you know, when I talk to companies and just kind of compare notes on ERP systems is the one pain point everybody has is in the reporting, right? Is that, you know, it might be great doing your accounting, but when it comes to being able to report, um, everyone seems to hate their ERP, regardless of what, you know, what they're, what they're in that, you know, there isn't one that's, uh, everyone's like, oh, I love this, right? But um, be able to supplement that with, uh, with other, you know, other tools. So, I guess, um, you know, my next question is, you know, around, uh, you know, your CFO in the organization, you seem to know a good amount about like the underlying technology your reports are on. I work with companies where, you know, the CFO really wasn't involved at all. And it was just run me by reports and send them over to me. And there have been, you know, CFOs that have been hands on in daily status meetings of technology implementations, you know, meeting every day and, you know, kind of going over where, where we're at, you know, where, where do you think like, you know, as a, as a CFO, like the sweet spot is in terms of being involved in the, you know, the systems that you're using versus just a, an end consumer of, uh, of the reports. No, I think it's, it's crucial for a CFO to be uh, deeply involved in decisions uh, surrounding what system uh, ultimately gets implemented and what systems uh, we will use. Uh, how I see a CFO role this day and age is more like an, an compass on the sailboat, for instance. We have, uh, we, we are there to provide direction to the different uh, stakeholders, both internally as externally. Uh, so to be able to provide directions, the systems that an organization has available are absolutely crucial because that again provides the data and provides the insights. In the past, the CFO was perhaps a little bit different. It was more focused on accounting, looking backwards, creating those statutory reports, facilitating the audits, etc. This day and age, the CFO role is completely different. And it, of course, we're responsible for making sure the accounting uh, is that properly? We need to make sure that the internal controls are well designed and implemented. But uh, very important role for CFO this day and age is uh, having a business partnering role. The only way to become a good business partner, eh, partner is to have the right information in the right time, uh, aggregated and presented in the right way to facilitate business decisions, uh, propose the business decisions, propose different improvement projects, and the likes. Uh, so therefore, uh, a large part of our power, a large part of the value that we bring to the table is dependent on uh, the information that we get, and how easy it is to get that information. And to ensure that it is done uh, properly, I would highly recommend to stay closely involved in any, uh, any decisions that are being made surrounding uh, uh, softwares. Uh, what you'll find as well as that uh, more often you and often you find that the IT function is involved in to the CFO role, uh, which I think is a good development because that allows us to be very close to the wall. Yeah, no, that that's that's great. Um, in terms of, do you typically have any preferences on products that you look at as to whether or not they're cloud-based versus uh, versus not? Like, is it 
matter to you one way or another? Uh, for me, I'm uh, more a bigger fan of cloud-based, uh, proper secure cloud-based, what is uh, easily attainable now at this moment of time, of course, due to the security and the safety and the backup procedures that it's uh, easier facilitated than having something uh, on site. Uh, those servers are largely are, are huge. Uh, they take up a lot of space in this day and age. It's easy to get it uh, in the cloud. So uh, that's what I, I prefer. Here, no, that that's great. And in terms of, you know, I know that with the shift to the cloud, it's very easy to, um, you know, due to cost effectiveness, have multiple products, uh, you know, out there. And some of the challenges that, you know, some of my customers have faced in the past is how do we get all these different siloed cloud products to speak to each other and to come in under one roof in terms of, um, you know, the data um, you know, have you found, uh, you know, challenges in those areas and you know, like, what are some things that you'd recommend to, you know, kind of, of course, that, that, that remains, it is always in a huge challenge within the ID space to get all those different systems to talk with each other and to be uh, properly integrated. Uh, there are challenges, there are always uh, uh, additional steps that need to be taken, but in general, um, we're able to overcome those hurdles. Uh, with the too much pay, I would say. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, in terms of, um, you know, what what are some areas that you think that, you know, similar organizations or other organizations should look at in terms of investments to, you know, to save, to save time or improve efficiency? Yeah, then perhaps I can speak towards that. Uh, look, throughout my career, I have been working with parts of organization organization that were underperforming. We spoke a little bit about the CFO role, how it was structured in the past, more focused on accounting, more focused on the strategy reporting, and less focused on business partnering. Uh, what I do within my role is, uh, is usually I end up with an organization where there's value locked, that could be value locked in the, uh, the structure of the finance department, could be locked in uh, uh, the network and capital component, could be value locked in pricing, could be locked in the operational processes, but they are usually tasked to find a way to unlock that value for that organization. I have a blueprint to execute that, but I join an organization where there's value locked. I first start off by analyzing and assessing the people, ensuring that we have the right people. And uh, then I analyze the structure, ensure that we have the right structure and the right tools. The next step is that focus on the internal controls and accounting to make sure that we have the proper foundation to build our decisions on. And the next step for me is to invest in the data. And when I say invest in the data, it's on one and making sure we have a proper data pool that we can utilize to pull information from to see how the organization is performing on a very, very low level. And it could be surrounding pricing, it could be surrounding the cost base, it could be surrounding resource allocation, it could be surrounding the working capital elements, such as accounts receivable or inventory. But the moment you are able to get that information in an efficient and effective way, you can then perform a proper capital analysis to pull the current performance uh, back by data and then benchmark that against an expectation, which could be the budget, could be the uh, pay performance, could be the past performance. Etc. And that's really where the, where the value is created. Uh, next to that, with proper data, you can follow the proofing processes through. I, you know, I've identified that there's a gap between where we want to be in terms of performance and where we currently are in terms of performance. And against the what the position can be based on the budget, prior year performance, prior performance. And then based on that, you can then create an execution plan to drive that value. Uh, and with proper data, you can then see whether or not you're tracking in the right direction. You've heard me using the word data to a lot in the last couple of uh, minutes, because you know, it's crucially important. So what I do to facilitate it, that is to make sure that when we have a proper data link, secondly, have a proper business intelligence tool, because again, this day and age, there's so much data available that it's easy for uh, to get overwhelmed by the data, the mm -hmm. data overload. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's crucial to create a big 
data lake and on top of that create a business intelligence tool such as power bi to be able to slice and dice and aggregate the data in a way that you can pull whatever you want to pull with a top in an efficient way and what it does is also take away a lot of the uh, resources that are tied up with uh, yeah, data crunching, how we call that in the past. So now with all the data available, uh, in the past people would address that data with uh, pivot tables and uh, a few lookups in the last to get to the uh, conclusion, which is very uh, time consuming and it's very sensitive to errors, i.e. you can spend a lot of time to create an insight or to find out that it's uh, full with errors, you need to do that again. So not only is that yeah, information, information gathering inefficient, but therefore also ineffective, plus shift and risk to ultimately burn out some of the phones and get frustrated. So therefore the investment of the data lack and the business intelligence tool is absolutely crucial. Now we are in the, in the, in the time frame of uh, AI. Uh, we had currently generative AI take a lot of headlines, but prior to that we had other AI tools. Uh, that are widely used, they're generative, but still AI tools, such as automation and the likes. And that's something I believe a finance leader at this moment in time should invest their time in to make sure that they at least use those uh, AI tools that are available and that slowly but surely prepare the organization for the next wave that is actually currently here with this generative AI. And that's really where the efficiencies will lie going forward. Automation by itself is a huge, a huge uh, a tool, a powerful tool that we have in our toolbox, if you utilize and understood properly. Because again, what it does is all that manual work uh, that uh, the finance organization now uh, tasked to do the data creation of likes with automation tools such as Alteryx, they can take a large part of all that data crunching, I mean, it's all again uh, uh, subject and uh, exposed to a lot of potential errors the way it can make it automated and therefore you get that information in, uh, in a uh, more efficient and uh, more effective way and uh, with a less risk of, uh, of errors. Next to that, the time that you free up by utilizing automation tools such as Alteryx is that you can now reallocate that resources and the time spent and was used to populate the information to other value creating tasks. So to summarize all of that, what's important is uh, from a CFO leadership point of view at uh, this day and age, what's important in my opinion to invest in is to ensure you have that proper groundwork done to be able to leverage uh, automation, uh, to leverage uh, AI, to leverage generative AI, then what it is to make sure you get the right people on board with the right skill set so that the pure play accounting skill set is still very important. You need to make sure you have that in house to make sure that foundation is laid properly. But next to that, you really need to invest it in the different uh, type of resource that is uh, they are skilled and able to navigate through the new landscape, which uh, is packed with, uh, with non traditional. Uh, the yeah, skill sets that uh, finance employees should have going forward. They can be comfortable with, with tools such as uh, Alteryx, automation tools, and generative AI tools. So uh, yeah, that for me is the biggest investment on one end, on the, the tools itself, but secondly, it's yeah, very important as well in the right uh, employees to be able to uh, navigate through uh, get the new reality. Along with it, but I hope uh, you got something out of it. No, that, that's great. And, you know, it's this is... Part of the reason why I started this show is that, you know, you meet a lot of different people with different backgrounds and, you know, different levels of involvement, um, you know, things where there, there are a lot of CFOs who just think that getting the data to them is magic and uh, and they click a couple buttons and, and magic runs behind the scenes and they get to the data and you get others that, you know, are, are more hands on that, you know, take the, the time to understand kind of what's happening behind the scenes. So I think it's great to, you know, to see that, you know, you understand, you know, kind of how well the technology is uh, playing together to get you the results that you're looking at. Uh, I know you mentioned a lot about AI and, you know, I want to get there in a, in a second, but just curious on, um, you know, it, it sounds like you work, you know, fairly closely with IT in order to, you know, kind of realize the vision of, you know, having all these tools talk to each other. You know, have you seen the role that IT, um, you know, has played to be different with kind of the emergence of things being cloud-based versus, 
you know, when things were, uh, you know, were on. Uh, I think the thing that true, well, perhaps to an extent, the organization I've worked for uh, throughout the most part of my career was largely cloud based. Uh, so I can't really speak to that, how that was prior to that. I can only ma- uh, remember those big servers taking up all that space in the office. And uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit more riskier in general in terms of backup and recovery. It's all physical. So if something uh, happens in the office and you don't have a proper backup and recovery process uh, in place, you're, you're exposed, which is uh, less, of course, if you're cloud-based. I mean, mm-hmm. green security, uh, it has my preference to uh, to to be cloud based. Yeah, no, that that's great. And then just in terms of like, you know, when you look and see a a, a new tool, um, I guess uh, you know a lot of companies struggle with how do we ensure IT involvement and you know getting the right buy in from you know from everybody um, that's needed. Like like how do you typically um, you know, engage IT for, you know, new products that you're looking to, to buy in it. Yeah, that's very, a very good question. Uh, I'm lucky enough to, uh, to have a strong IT team that understands the vision, that understands the need to change. Uh, and with that, they're having the availability to, uh, to be able to propose new systems and tools. Uh, as you know, to implement something uh, like an Authorix, like a Power BI, mm-hmm. it's not the most difficult implementation process if you compare it to an ERP system. However, to be really efficient and utilize those tools to the best, uh, it's important to have a good and close relationship with IT. They have all those interfaces that properly. Uh, uh, it's absolutely crucial to have a strong IT team and to uh, an IT team that is up to speed that shares the visions where you can really spar with because uh, um, with it you can uh, then come up with uh, with proper uh, yeah tools and insights that, that benefits the business the box. Of course, the languages are completely different. So if you would speak to me the core technical IT language, you, you lose me and vice versa with finance. So to be able to find the common ground, to be able to articulate what it's needed, why it's needed, it's absolutely crucial. What I found is uh, within my organization, uh, to be able to drive this value, I spoke about that roadmap, people, the controls, uh, the accounting, that creating that, that, that proper platform in which you can leverage the, uh, the business intelligence tools properly. But I've always uh, done in my different turnaround uh, projects is to keep uh, the BI tool, the technical guys, IT guys are very, very close to me because those insights, those needs can change rapidly. I.e., if uh, if you want to work with an organization, a manufacturing organization, that the performance is below par and new insights are needed, that's more of an ad hoc basis in which that IT team needs to be very, very close to that finance team to create what uh, what is efficient and to have a finance team of an IT team that is a bit more remote and becomes a little bit more challenging. I think therefore we spoke a little bit about the finance profile, the profile of finance individuals and how that's changed. In the past, you would need to have somebody who has a strong accounting background or you need to have somebody with a strong finance background that understands their ratios and how values creation. But it's very important this day and age, if you ask me, just to have somebody of a couple of team members in the team uh, that have really, really strong, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say IT background, but perhaps coding background. And mm-hmm. uh, comfortable with uh, with making uh, with, with coding, and uh, are comfortable with, uh, with utilizing all those different tools that now are available. It will be close. Uh, that's the structure of the hires that I do in certain elements of my team, business intelligence team, which is a part of my finance team. And uh, yeah, the profile is just completely different. It's less important for those individuals to know accounting, to know finance. It's more important for those individuals to know. Uh, how the coding works. If you have that within the finance team, 
you create a lot of enormous amount of flexibility because you can then uh, communicate the needs uh, quickly whenever there's an interface needed with IT. You can go through these uh, to these individuals where have a combined skills of one to hit finance, but I think coding and speak the IT language, then that's truly where that the magic happens, if you ask me. Yeah, no, that that's great. Um, you know, and, and a lot of companies struggle with, you know, like I said, there are a lot of, you know, CFOs, uh, financial, you know, finance team members where, you know, if you think that, hey, there's magic happening behind the scenes that's getting you what, what you need, uh, it's very hard to be able to communicate, um, you know, what you need and to be able to understand, you know, when the IT guy says, hey, it's going to take two weeks to build an integration that does this. And you say, well, don't you just click a button or two and 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 the data comes over, right? So, you know, having that kind of cross-functional understanding of, you know, someone from finance can communicate to someone from IT and, and vice versa, you know, now that that'll go a long way in terms of being able to, A, communicate your needs to, to IT, but you know, have the both of uh, both teams, you know, just working together to, you know, to get to a, a common... Uh, you know, coming in. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And as mentioned earlier, the profile uh, will change completely. So uh, the finance, the finance profile that was needed on the accounting profile that was needed 10, 15 years ago is completely different from the profile that is needed five to 10 years from Pepsi. But now, uh, so the investments is really getting the right people are more coupled with the systems to stay up to speed. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Um, so just to kind of uh, backtrack a little bit on, you know, um, you talked a little bit about AI and, and the role of, you know, AI in finance. And, you know, I know with, uh, you know, really Chad GPT started the whole craze of there are a lot of people that are out there that um, are either really excited about uh, what AI is going to do. And there are people that are very afraid um, that, you know, we're going to get overtaken by armies of robots and that, you know, they're going to go and, and take over the world over there. Um, you know, so I, I guess, how do you, um, you know, how do you see the role of AI taking over um, or enhancing the finance function, you know, going forward? And, you know, what kind of AI um, investment should, you know, companies be looking at now to uh, to make sure that they're ahead of the curve or at least on par with their competitors? That's a very good question, and I believe that uh, uh, AI will definitely enhance generative AI. Will definitely enhance the finance organization. It will make us significantly more efficient going forward. Uh, but yeah, we need to get prepared for that because I think the person, the organization, races that the quickest that they're able to utilize it, that the quickest they will have massive advantage going forward. To get the power of generative AI, everybody wants Chat GPT. When it came out, you started to play around with it. And when you started to play around with it, you uh, can't ignore the power of the tool uh, immediately. Almost. And uh, I think a lot of the organizations at this moment in time are still trying to navigate through how to best make this work for them in different areas. So I think it's hard to ignore the power, but how can we utilize that? In the next you have that security question. Uh, of how can we safeguard our data? How do we, how do we make sure that, that our information is not utilized by people or places that we don't want it to be utilized? Yes, yeah, so that's one big challenge that we need to overcome as a as, as world, basically, to make uh, generative AI more accessible for, for organizations, but I'm sure that will be overcome. What we need to do to prepare ourselves for a uh, for generative AI to truly leverage the, the power that it has. I think what I've explained earlier surrounding uh, what we're doing with uh, uh, that generative AI, but general AI, I think those are the, the foundations and the fundamentals that the CEO, CFO and organization should take at this moment in time. And the biggest shift is uh, surrounding the people, making sure you have the right people in place that are able to, to uh, navigate to those uh, yeah, new tools we have to uh, yeah, work with our tools basically. Uh, next to that, I think data will be very, very important. So make sure that you set up a proper data lake or proper data house that is managed properly 
and leverage robot instead of foreign things in AI, such as automation tools. Uh, yeah, and, and again, the power of uh, of generative AI is huge. So I don't think I don't think we should be scared that it will overtake, but I don't think we should be oblivious to the fact that it will make a lot of jobs and tasks redundant. Uh, I.e., if you look at the report, the financial report, the operational report, the population of PowerPoints, the population, the population of uh, of detailed analysis. All of that can be taken away with the proper utilization of generative AI tools. We all know those examples which should the uh, lawyer had to write an opinion piece and uh, the generative AI was writing an opinion piece as well. And they were compared with each other and the generative AI piece was significantly better than the, the piece from that lawyer. That's all in the beginning. And if you think through what uh, what can happen, wind generative AI getting through the to speed, talking about financial analysis, talking about, for instance, uh, opportunities without even pricing. If you talk about opportunities out of uh, uh, inventory levels, inventory mix, getting opportunities around in resource allocation, getting opportunities about uh, uh, yeah, what, what have you, uh, cost optimizations. Uh, all that information will be uh, or can be at some point in time proposed uh, by generative AI in a much more efficient way we can, uh, can do it now. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, when, when it's truly up to speed, then it's not so much on the generative AI side, it's more on the side of the organizations that we're ready to uh, fully embrace that again, the firm to have the right resource, the right people, and make sure that uh, the house is proper safeguarded. Uh, for for data breaches, the moment that that is all up to par, and take the consideration that the organization has taken the right steps to prepare themselves for generative AI, ensuring that the data management is done properly, then uh, yeah, it will definitely take off. Yeah, no, that's there are a lot of great um, you know nuggets of wisdom in in what you said over there. You know, some of the takeaways I'm getting from that are you know one, it's more important than ever to make sure that you know, your data is in a good spot where it's, you know, accurate, it's clean, it's it's ready to be used by uh, an AI type of system where, you know, you can run all sorts of algorithms on your data. If your data is not right, then, you know, you're not going to get the outputs that you're looking for, whether a human or a robot is uh, is going and analyzing it. No, that's exactly right. That's appropriate what you said. Yeah. So, you know, I think that that's, that's great. You know, also, you know, being in a stage where you're checking, um, you know, we're not just using AI for the sake of, uh, you know, using it and that we're checking the outputs that are coming out because, well, there are a lot of instances where it's giving great output. It's better than, um, you know, what a human does. Uh, you know, I, in some cases I have it write some code for me and, it goes and comments them and I get all detailed explanations of what it's doing, things that I might shortcut myself for uh, in order to save a little bit of time. It's going and doing, you know, better practice uh, out there. You know, there are cases too where, you know, you go and you ask it to do some research and write an article for you and it gives you some statistics and you say, all right, well, uh, you know, uh, can you cite the sources of that? goes oh well you know this is just kind of what i'm observing uh there's no source that tells me this or that so you know it's it's important to to embrace ai i think uh you know at least one of the things that i'm seeing out there is it's really important to like you said you know make sure that the data is that your data is structured properly you have a plan around how are we going to secure this you make sure that whatever generative AI um, software you're using is using your data responsibly and not using right. it to go and train its its models on, you know, unpublished financials from your organization, uh, you know, things like that. But, you know, it, it seems like, uh, you know, the future is very bright and there are a lot of great use cases where uh, using a, a generative AI tool could, uh, you know, could save a lot of uh, time and in increase, uh, you know, the opportunities. I know you're spot on that. Uh, I like to compare it with the development of internet. If you think back 20 years ago, what the internet used to look like, and if you look at the capabilities now, what the internet has, if you go through that same cycle with generative AI in the early phases, 
if it goes at the same rate as internet, it was going through over the last uh, two decades, uh, yeah, there's a lot that we can expect going forward. So, uh, you know, I do expect that rate of development to be significantly spaced higher than what we saw with the internet in general. So I believe that, uh, yeah, yeah, we need to be prepared for generative AI. We need to make the right steps, but uh, 100% right. I mean, uh, at this moment in time, we still have a, a very, very important role of supervising the output of uh, generative AI. Yeah, absolutely. For, you know, CFOs, CIOs that might be a little bit hesitant to, you know, invest in AI, Every, everyone likes to ask the question, right? You could be an early adopter, you know, when when it, when are you getting on the train too late versus when is the right time versus when is too early? Um, you know, do you think that, um, you know, for companies that haven't really, you know, looked at AI up until this point that, you know, starting now is is the right time. Do you think that you know they should give it a little bit? Do you think that um, you know they they kind of miss the miss the train? Yeah. I don't think uh, this the train. Uh, look, you got two elements, right? You got the generative AI, the chat GPT. You got the normal AI. Uh, I think it's time to get on board with AI because you know the generative AI will go with uh, such a rate when it gets fully up to speed. That's going to be difficult to catch up. Now, what I also know uh, from uh, yeah, speaking with some peers and what I've experienced throughout my career, which I uh, have stints of projects of value creation, which I just one of the key pillars that I need to change is uh, making sure that uh, we implement the right software teams, we implement the proper team that is able to form and uh, have a business partner in role. And again, data management plays an absolutely vital element of becoming a business partner within uh, within uh, yeah within the organization uh so uh, generative ai i don't think that organization if that hasn't if an organization has not embraced the generative ai that it has missed the boat uh, i myself from a financial from a professional point of view within my current organization we haven't embraced generative ai to the fullest yet neither that's Larger by the points that we just discussed surrounding the showing that the data is protected properly. But on the AI side, I think uh, that is something that uh, yeah, I would not recommend to wait longer. Because uh, for that AI, does it uh, creates a lot more flexibility for the team. It takes a lot of the, the day-to-day data crunching, uh, yeah, the uh, exploiting tasks away from the finance team. Can they focus more on exploring versus exploiting? They said it. I also believe that uh, which is goes hand in hand with automation is that uh, organizations should invest in data management to make sure that they have proper data pools and data lakes and business intelligence tools. Because I think when an organization is paired in those areas, we generate they generate the AI and fix the challenge that we are currently facing, which perhaps prevented a bit from. Uh, really taken off, the moment that uh, those issues are being solved, uh, then you're at least ready to fully embrace uh, uh, generative AI. And next to that, I can't uh, say that often enough, but people are the most important things within an organization. So you really have to make sure you get the right people on board, because it's a completely different language, uh, completely different skill set, and co- completely different profile. If you meet those profiles on board, you can really make those steps towards uh, those preparing yourself for generative AI. If you wait too long, if you don't uh, invest in uh, you're building your own knowledge around this subject, it will become painful. And why I'm saying painful is because the speed that an organization will be able to operate it while using generative AI or using AI tools at this moment in time is significantly faster than an organization that's then using it. We all know that it's it says that the uh, operational leader needs a complex review on uh, the product pricing uh, and mixed effects uh, to find ways to uh, boost the margins through high prices in a way that uh, doesn't depend the overall volume too much. Uh, 
uh, if you would give that task to an uh, employee without providing a proper data link, without providing business intelligence tools, or automation tools, it could take that individual multiple, multiple weeks to get that information. Well, with that structure is in place, with the data link is in place, with the business intelligence tools are in place, and the information is uh, uh, extracted in an efficient way through automation tools, then that say analysis can take uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Then what it does is it makes that organization significantly quicker in terms of decision making, the yeah, resource allocation, where you spend your time on. And then it gets amplified with have to such a generative AI. So the decisions will become quicker. And at some point, uh, the generative AI, if it's not already done so, actually, is able to do so, is to uh, to actually provide suggestions surrounding things forward. So you only have to evaluate, test that, and uh, determine what the route forward, what the best route forward is. So, uh, yeah, it, it's really important to embrace that uh, those steps. So I don't think generative AI uh, there's any boat missed at this moment in time, but on the, on the AI side, data management side, get the right people in place. You know, if you haven't done so yet, uh, you probably need to start uh, doing that uh, ASAP. Yeah, no, that that's great. Um, definitely a lot of great insights over there. Um, I know we're running out of time over here, so I guess just to wrap up, um, any uh, other general tips or advice that you have for um, you know, other other CFOs before we uh, we wrap up over here? No, I uh, just want to thank you guys for having me on today. I think I shared a lot, and I think but I believe it's important. I think uh, IT systems and the likes, uh, it's close to my heart. Uh, I believe a large part of the transformational projects that I've heard to tell you that I've created the cross continent across organization, always found that anchor and that foundation in team work. Yeah, to the extent of think data management, the insights and get analysis, and without it, the right process, the right tools, it's uh, simply impossible. So, uh, passionate about it. Thank you for having me on. No, this is great. Thank you so much for for coming on. You know, for those uh, watching, just uh, make sure that you like, subscribe to the channel, um, so that we can get other great guests like Ty on the on the show. Ty, you know, you've been extremely valuable in uh, in the insights provided and you know we'd, we'd love to have you on again in the future to you know kind of talk about what's uh, what's changed uh, over the, the next period of time. Uh, and and ty what's uh, what's the best way for um you know if, if our viewers have questions if they want to get in contact with you uh because where is the five you only did and very responsive there if you drop me a message uh I'll definitely uh, hit it. Please back up. Perfect. Good. Once again, thank you so much for, for coming on the show and love to have you on again in the future. <laughs> <laughs>